Hello, I'm Simon and I am back with another episode in our series of making properties more flood resilient. So we're often asked how to flood proof a house or if you can flood proof a house. Now it's not a term we particularly like because that implies the house is going to be 100% protected, which is unrealistic. But there are things you can do to reduce the ingress into the property. So we're going to look at how to make the walls more flood resistant. People often just install flood barriers and forget the rest. So we've already covered protecting the sewerage network against backflow, but we're going to look today at reducing ingress through the walls. So what options have you got? Well, waterproofing is split into two key areas. You've got positive waterproofing and negative waterproofing. Positive waterproofing would be on the outside of a structure, helping stop water penetrate in to the inside of the structure. Now, negative waterproofing would be done on the inside of the structure, helping hold water out from the outside from coming in. So positive waterproofing on a property can often be less disruptive and you might not actually know it's been done. It doesn't require the inside of the property to be stripped. And it also can allow for good continuity between your waterproof surfaces. So if you're protecting the outside and you fit your flood barrier rails also to the outside, you've got a good continuity keeping the water out of the property because you're using the same surface. Now, something we often see is just a cream recommended, something like this storm dry cream from Safeguard or a water stop or water seal cream. Now, it's often only useful in uh, flash flooding that's low level, that's quick, and at higher depths, just alone doesn't keep out a huge amount of water, but it can be useful and does have its place. It can also help protect the brickwork. But if you couple this with repointing and consider an additive like additive number two, test data shows that with nothing in place, the water ingressing through a wall can be something like 12.5 litres per metre squared per minute. And if you to repoint with an additive such as additive number two and apply the cream, that can drop to less than 0.2 litres per metre squared per minute. So it's a huge reduction in water coming into the property. Now, if you have an older property, something that needs breathability in the mortar, there's also an additive called additive number one. Now, it's a similar mixture to additive number two, but it maintains the breathability and can help reduce water ingress into the property. Now, if we look at negative waterproofing, that can be very cost effective and easy to apply where the walls are exposed. So imagine that you'd got a garage with breeze block on the inside and the external walls would be effectively exposed to water. You could apply structural waterproofing, such as a slurry render to the inside of the wall and help reduce water from getting inside. Now that can be very easy and uh, cost effective. So if I slide this in, it's quite heavy. Oh, here we go. This is an example of what sort of slurry render comes as in a bag and you'd mix it and apply it to that wall. It can be very cost effective where the wall is exposed. Or for instance, if your property had already been stripped and you were applying it behind the plaster. Now there are some disadvantages with that, that it can make the property a bit slower to dry out in future. But there is another thing you can do as well when looking at negative waterproofing, which is again, quite simple to do. It's a fillet seal between the wall and the floor. So that's a particular weak point. You can put a fillet seal with a waterproof mortar in that area and it just protects from water coming in that gap. Now, if you look at structural waterproofing as a whole or negative waterproofing, there are lots of other methods such as cavity drainage membranes leading into sump pumps. But here we're just sort of looking at things that are more cost effective that you can do in a property that's in a flood risk area to reduce water from coming into the property. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We'll be doing more of these videos, helping raise awareness of flood risk and ultimately how you can better protect your property.